up. <laughs> Jordan Maroon 5. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the need to MS paint Jordan's face on all the you members of Maroon 5. If anyone's <laughs> going to uh, retweet my tweet about the cast, go ahead and retweet it now. That would be awesome. Yeah, we just bros. tweeted out. Everyone go and retweet the live podcast tweet right now. From KB Mod Gaming. Right. Oh, there. We're not starting, about... not starting until everyone in stream retweets this. Wow, dude, that's going to take a while. <laughs> wow. <laughs> gonna have to like check the names if of everybody. If this retweet gets five thousand likes, we'll do another stream. <laughs> Although we fully intend on doing another stream anyway. Yeah, no, we're not gonna do another podcast unless we get five thousand retweets on that. What's that? What's that? Uh, what's that thing that YouTubers use? The uh, like tweet me links or whatever. I don't even know what they are. Oh, like auto tweets out? And yeah, the really yeah. really big yeah. dudes use them, and uh, because. I once I once considered using that and then I just kicked myself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna have to mark shit for Mark Miguel. <laughs> um. All right. <laughs> Someone editing the Google Doc right now, like while I'm looking at it. Yeah. Me. <laughs> just wait until Nick puts something stupid in there in like sixty point <laughs> font. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. I'm gonna yep, count. Yep. I'm gonna count down, and then we will do it. Making the title, Comic Sans. <laughs> That's the most professional thing to do. Yeah. My entire sociology syllabus. All right. Was don't in edit Comic it right Sans. now because I gotta add this. Add this. Uh, add this timestamp when I get it started here. All right. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Five. Four, three, two, one, and welcome to the fifty-fourth uh, episode of the KB Mob podcast. Uh, if you're watching us, you can tell we have a little bit, a little bit of a scant cast tonight. John and Scott couldn't make it. Um, Scott is in an airport somewhere. John is with some family, but we do have a guest tonight. Mark, all sham, no wow. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. <laughs> he is here to uh, help us out, and he is worth way more than Scott, certainly. Um, wow, stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's already Next done relief. more research than Scott has for about the past dozen casts. So. Yeah, I know. Sure. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but he's not, he's not quite as surprised that we've made it this far with the podcast no, as Scott. I'm not quite as surprised. Wow. We're already at episode 54, guys. Yeah, oh, already. guys. It's almost That's like amazing. It's for 54 weeks. It just crept up on like us. It's almost like we've done this before. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> All right, so we'll go around, around the horn as we do. So, Alex, I, I haven't... Well, I know you've been playing some DayZ, but what, what have you been playing this week? Well, this may come as a surprise to some people, but uh, I really got into uh, Bioshock lately. Wow, cool. Yeah, you did. And, uh, you watched some developer commentary today, I saw. Oh that. my god, it's the coolest thing ever. Okay, so I pl <laughs> I've been, I beat Bioshock yeah. Two over the last two days, but this this Bioshock developer commentary is um, oh, what's the guy's name? Let me, let me get it. J P LeBreton, who designed Arcadia in the first Bioshock, as well as he was like involved in all the other levels. He was he's a founder of Two K Marin, as well, and he just plays through Bioshock and just like gives commentary on like, oh, this was made by this guy. This was hard to do in development. This is where this came from. And he talks about everything that a nerd like me would like. A nerd who's in love with Ken Levine. Quite literally. With Ken, yeah, with Ken Levine. Quite yeah. literally in love. The funny part is, though, is that he's so, he's so like, into that game. Like, he was such a part of it that he just shits on it the whole time. He's just like, that was really shitty. Like, I'm really glad we didn't show the little sister's face there because they're pretty bad. <laughs> And he's like, I know, I'm I'm really proud to be a part of this game, and it was a really great time, but I've just played it too much. <laughs> and I was like, well, never. Yeah, I know. You also played some Daisy, I'm sure, which I have not. Days. I did not. I played not forever the first time at night with my night vision goggles. Oh God, you're like, like we scared. Actually did that played at night once. We actually found a server that wasn't completely dark to the point where you couldn't see anything. So yeah, we actually got to play at night. I don't yeah, know if they had some kind of weird server. Yeah, I don't know. Mo most servers thing. that I go on to that are nighttime, they're they're like so dark to the point that you can maybe see the sky, and that's about it. Like over the dark ass tree line that you've got, but nothing else. So yeah, I mean you have to have a road flare to even see two feet in front of you. 
I accidentally like... logged into one server that was at night because the, the time zone was reading incorrectly. And, and then I just saw it was like actually realistic in that it's completely pitch black. You cannot do <laughs> thing. Yep. You cannot move anywhere without night vision. So I just immediately quit and found a server that was daytime. Yeah, if you watch videos from people who people have like thermal sights and night vision and shit, it's like you're you might as well be god, like with that <laughs> equipment because you can do whatever you want. Yeah, but the thing is, is that if you go into a night only server and there's like eight people in there, that's eight people they can see at night. Yeah, everybody like has. Around, like everyone's yeah. blind. I'm god now. <laughs> like, those are, that's eight people who most likely have better guns than you and 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 are more experienced at night and will kill you. So good luck. <laughs> Yeah, I think the only people that play at night are the hardcore Daisy players that uh, are really into just playing at all hours of the day, and they have all the equipment that they need in the world to screw you over. So yeah. they're prepared. <laughs> <laughs> but what about you, Nick? What have you been playing this week? Uh, I played some Daisy, and I don't. So you play some I... Black Ops zombies? I did play some Black Ops. Some zombies and some multiplayer. We did. We played some Black Ops, yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know why, but... Why not? It was fun. Well, Ernest Lee, man, mm-hmm. had his Yeah, he's got a bumping. server now with a good map rotation, so that helps. Yeah, it's a really good rotation. And Nick had a clutch cap, yep. so I don't I know. know what he's complaining about. He got to win. Uh, I played Orcs Must Die too. That's pretty fun. Is it? Oh, I, was like I was thinking about getting that. It's I think like there's, there's a demo if you... I mean, if you are on the Pretty edge, much tower defense, yeah? Pretty much. Yep. Dungeon I heard it was. I heard it was deal. best as co-op, so I, want, I was going to wait for someone to like want to get it with me. Yeah, the a... map design definitely is centered around co-op because there are some maps where, mm. like the way the rifts are set up, you have to travel back and forth to keep right. uh, everything from getting into the uh, the exit. It's it's really obnoxious sometimes, so it's good to have a co-op partner. Yeah, looks good. That's about it. And yeah. I started playing Borderlands today. Just trying. You trying to get through it before Borderlands too? I guess. I uh, love that 65 <laughs> field of view. Yeah, it's pretty good <laughs> looking down the anus of the world. I need to fix you, that. The best Are you running it you, on uh, Steam? <laughs> yeah. I can't the best do is that. when you go into the files and, and bind your FOV to your W key. Yeah. yeah. So every time you move forward, you change your fucking field yeah, of like view. Yeah, like you'll be walking and then it'll just be like poof. <laughs> <laughs> So that is that game most... is really poorly optimized. I couldn't run it on Steam. I, every time I tried to do it, it would crash. I had to run it outside of Steam. But it luckily runs it had fine. It's just it had its own looking player, down. so it didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, that FOV fix it was like the nail in the coffin for like <laughs> just the worst console port. <laughs> no effort given at all. Brand, Brandon and I played that together with uh, with Dom and Drew for like eight hours straight one night, and I literally have not played it since. I haven't either. <laughs> we literally we played it for eight hours. We probably got like a quarter way through the game in like one session. It's such a good game, though. It really is so, a great it's game. So repetitive. It was, it was worth that five dollars I spent for those eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. Steam That's deal. like one of my top played games in terms of time I put in. Yeah, I have like 14 hours in it. I don't even remember when I did that. But I have like 14 hours in it. Um, What about you, Brandon? Well, I'll go last. You'll go last. What about you, Mark? What have you been playing this week? Uh, This week, I have actually been playing World of Warcraft and COD 4. Those are the two games that I've been putting a lot of time into this week. I don't know how you're uh, still on this Warcraft train, but you're doing it somehow. (laughs) Well, I'm stuck on WoW until October because of the annual pass. Yeah, so am I. (laughs) So uh, I'm I'm not just going to let it sit there and and just gather dust. So I've just been going for Lore Master. It's just been wasting my time. Whatever, like it's like it's like a podcast cast game for me now. Like I listen to a podcast and do Lore Master, and that's all I do, <laughs> just to pass some time. I don't take it seriously, and I'm probably not going to and miss. I'm probably going to level to ninety, and if Guild Wars 2's PvP like grasps me, I'm going to just quit WoW altogether because uh, it's just getting really outdated. Yeah, it's in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll I'd... talk about that later. Yeah, we will talk about that later. Cool. Um, little teaser i uh this week i mostly play what did i play this week i'm already blanking out it's already blanking on me uh He's black old. ops a lot of black ops hopped on the, ops. the blr train again um mainly because if you guys didn't know uh blr has a contest coming up or maybe it already started i think it i don't think it's the 16th i believe is when is the exact day that it yeah starts. it's uh 30 days of fight and 
it's like if you win a match, you get two raffle tickets that day, and if you just play a match, you get one, and you have a chance to win a uh, chance to win a thousand dollars from it. So that's pretty, pretty sweet. Oh, and, and you can accumulate as many tickets as you want in a day. It's right. not just two or one. Yeah, and uh, I just I don't know why I forgot this. Played the hell out of Payday this week. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the new campaign, which is not as hard as the older ones, but um, we did beat the Slaughterhouse this week. So. Yep, that was nuts. It took us, what, like four tries to get Slaughterhouse? Oh, yeah, we dude. Were frustrated. We were getting yeah. destroyed. <laughs> and uh, But, yeah, that was a great time. Payday is going to be really good if they ever, I mean, I just, mod tools. They just need mod tools so bad. They need to allow customs. It would just, it would just be like Left 4 Dead 2. I mean, a different experience, but you'd have all that custom stuff going on. Yeah, the means. day the day they release mod tools, the next day you'd you'd be able to play on every single Left 4 Dead 2 map. Yep. Yeah, and there'd the be custom. Day. Think about the custom heists and shit there would be though. People would think up all kinds of crazy stuff. So it would be awesome. So elaborate and expensive, thus proving the point that all those people <laughs> do is rob shit to to fund their next robbing adventure. Yeah, I've I've made forty eight million in that game, and I think all of it's gone from it's spending gone. it on other heists into the next heist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Brandon, now you had a really strong gaming week. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did. I did play some games this weekend. Uh, it just it wasn't at my apartment. It was actually at the QuakeCon BYOC. So, if you didn't know, QuakeCon was this weekend. Uh, had a lot of fun. Luckily, it coincided right on my birthday, which was Thursday. So, happy birthday! All around awesome weekend. Um, so we played, we played a lot, actually. We played, uh, like, a bunch of TF2, a bunch of Tribes, uh, a little bit of DayZ, but then we realized that we couldn't play DayZ because it would take us hours to even find each other. <laughs> um, we were playing a lot of different stuff, um, but QuakeCon itself was really awesome. Uh, this year, they had, obviously, the Carmack Keynote, which we actually left part of the way through because, like, he just he just wouldn't stop. He's just like a fountain of knowledge. <laughs> and at a certain point, like, I just, my brain was melted. Did he just start reading his tweet stream at a certain point? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure the keynote was literally, like, at least two and a half hours. I think he may have gone three plus hours. That so. That's the thing, they call it a keynote, but he's just doing commentary over the entire QuakeCon. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, he was there the whole time. Basically, he's just talking. Like, it's not really even a keynote, because keynotes have, you know, some structure and time limit. They just, there's nothing else that happens on Thursday. Like, it's just him, and then, you know, you go out and you, you do your other stuff. So, it, he has no time limit at all. He just talks. And it's, it's, it's awesome, but, like, at a certain point, I had to go get food. Like, I was going to die. <laughs> so, so that was good. Um, if you didn't happen to catch us, we, we played in a couple tribes tourneys um, and uh, didn't lose a single round. Yeah, you guys were destroying. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we felt kind of bad because the, the people playing there obviously were not very experienced, so... Um, I don't, I don't know that it was really the best challenge, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is, and uh, we walked away with a thousand bucks, so can't complain about that. Yeah, not a uh, horrible time. <laughs> well, the, the QuakeCon Brink tournament is really the the big, like marquee event. People train for that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, un unsurprisingly, no Brink tournament this year. <laughs> um, one of the cool things, though, that, that they do every year, but I didn't go to it last year, is they have this hardware workshop, and it's pretty much just everyone goes into the main room, and they give away a ton of hardware. And so they gave away, they had like 100 or more of those AMD APUs, and uh, I actually won one of those that I think will probably raffle off uh, for Extra Life. Um, Brian Slamtart's got a nice Corsair mechanical keyboard. Um, they were just raffling off a ton of stuff, and so there are a lot of people that left with really nice hardware, and uh, it was really nice to see uh, Philip from PC Part Picker actually got some publicity. He he was up. There on it is, he's getting publicity right now too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was up on stage, so getting his name out there that was good to see. Um, and then the the last night, so we packed up late, late, late Saturday night, 
so that you can just go to bed and then sleep in on Sunday. And uh, before we were, like after that second Tribes tournament, we, uh, they, they asked us if we wanted to play in this, in this tourney for Arctic Combat. And I was like, I've never heard of Arctic Combat. I've never played this game. Apparently it's in beta. Um, and I don't know if anyone who's listening to this or watching the stream happened to catch that stream, but that is a god awful game. <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I was waiting I for was you to be like you to say that this is actually surprisingly good. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I mean, we had we, they've been playing some different stuff all night. Like they were playing World of Tanks, which I haven't played, but looked kind of cool. They were playing some other stuff. But this game, this Arctic Combat game, like basically a straight up Call of Duty rip off just absolutely horrendous and, uh, <laughs> and we ended up losing and, and I was almost glad we lost because I really didn't even I didn't want to play another eight rounds of it um, so it, that that was interesting but the whole weekend was awesome we met uh, met several KB mod fans uh, I didn't get my sign up because we were kind of like behind a post and uh, it wasn't I don't know it wasn't a good place to put it up but met quite a few fans um, had a really good time if you didn't go, you should have gone. If you didn't go, you need to go next year. That's all I can say. So, and uh, so now we're still on the topic of QuakeCon here. Um, so there was some... Oh, uh, one other thing, too. So Dishonored, I was looking forward to that. If you caught my tweet, they hey, I saw Dishonored that. on Xbox. It was a complete joke, and so I didn't play that. Well, hey, guys, <laughs> we uh, set up at uh, QuakeCon with an Xbox over here. <laughs> But most importantly, in my opinion, <laughs> Rise of the Triad was announced at QuakeCon. And, yeah, and they uh, had it playable. It, wow! Uh, I was I was telling I was telling you, Dan, earlier that um, they had it. They had a little booth and they had some some PCs set up. And I've never played Rise of the Triad. I didn't really know what it was about. But the gameplay looked really fast, almost almost Quake like. Um, and so it looked pretty cool. I didn't I didn't get a chance to play it. Um, because we weren't on, we weren't in the exhibition hall that much. But um, the game looked pretty cool. Definitely, you know, definitely uh, looked better than Dishonored on Xbox. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, I just linked the post as well in our chat. But for those of you who don't know what Rise of Triad is, it was a game that came out in '95 um, from Apogee Software, who also made the Duke Nukem, the original Duke Nukem, not the remake. Um, and it is just a batshit crazy game. That's that's the only way to describe it. The weapons are uh <laughs> Nick Fenton is holding a picture of a baby <laughs> dragon card. Dude, it's Yu Gi Oh, alright. <laughs> but uh basically it's it's there's weapons, it's like a whole flame wall, there's like a drunk drunk missiles, which is just six missiles that fire in random directions. Um, the guys you kill, if you shoot them just twice or three times, they'll get on their knees and beg for their life, and you can just execute them. <laughs> or, uh, actually in the new trailer, you can, like, rip their head off, it appeared. So, <laughs> it's it's gonna be crazy. Don't look for some crazy, awesome story in the game, because you're not gonna find it. But I will say this, I can almost guarantee it's gonna be better than the Duke Nukem remake. That gearbox, I believe it was Whoa. gearbox. Well, that's too. really that's really setting your standards high. Well, no, the whole yeah. thing is is like that was immediately a bunch of comments were like, oh, it's just going to be another uh, Duke Nukem remake. This is being made by the same developers uh, who made the original game. So after they brought Apogee Software back <laughs> as a, as a brand, and it's it's the same guys. So pretty pumped yeah, about for what, that. For what it's worth, I mean the the gameplay didn't remind me really of Duke Nukem. I mean if you if you hadn't told me that it was the the guys that did Duke Nukem. You the know, somewhat, yeah, the original Duke the, Nukem, not the Right, uh, the original. I mean I, I think I think a lot of time has passed between Yeah. But now and then the the game the game looks pretty cool though. It it looks it looked really fast paced. So it, it could be really good. So there was that. I don't think there were any other. There was no other like game announcements. I don't think. Um, well, there was a uh, there was a game that I heard about called Hotline Miami. I never saw the booth for it. So apparently, I guess maybe it was there, but I couldn't find it. So that sounds like a daytime TV drama. Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> apparently, an indie on Hotline Miami. Oh, Miami. Oh. <laughs> oh, the other thing was there. They had uh, like uh, Minecraft PvP was there. <laughs> I didn't play because I'm not like a big Minecraft player, but <laughs> seemed like a cool idea. I guess. So, there was a. 
<laughs> the other thing was uh, Doom 3, well, this I don't know if this is really a QuakeCon thing, really, but Doom 3 uh, BFG Edition, which will... Um, actually, I didn't include. So Doom 3 BFG Edition is coming out, as you mentioned, a few weeks ago, but there's going to be uh, a Lost Missions pack on there, which we obviously have to get Scott to play, because he will be terrified. So um, they demoed that a little bit. So. Yeah, they did, they did demo that, and they had uh, they had that uh, kind of in the Dishonored booth, and they had I, I, they had at least one PC playing that. I think they still had Xboxes playing Doom, which you know whatever. <laughs> uh, but the they were talk- Carmack was talking about how they they decided to do the re-release um, for Doom, and you know now everyone's kind of transitioning to work on Doom Four, which is obviously their next big project. So, yeah. um, so it's uh, lo- sounds like Doom Three BFG. You know, it's not going to be like a much of a departure from uh, from Doom Three, but it will be better. You know, better than Doom Three, basically an improved version. So, if you've never played Doom Three, I think that's what they're looking for is to kind of bring um, bring console players into the Doom universe. Because as yeah. as weird as it as weird as it seems to me. You know, there's a whole generation of kids out there that don't really know what Doom is. Yep. It's the first one, people. Come on. All right. For old nerds. So I've never gonna... played Doom. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll, uh, we'll ask Mark a few questions when we come back, and then we'll head into the news. So quick break, guys. And, we'll and if he back. doesn't answer, he's getting shaved. <laughs> shaved? What if you get a shave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever we can. <laughs> Are you working there? Are you good, Mark? My video's up, right? Yeah. Okay. Like, I went through this whole thing of, like, trying to disable the camera and then turn it back on so Skype would recognize it again. It's just being stupid. Skype's a bitch. I was having a weird, uh, like, I was messing around with my webcam controller to get it where I wanted to before the podcast, and I fucked up something and it froze, so I ended the process in my task manager, and it completely broke the webcam. Like, I needed to uninstall all the drivers and do a clean install, and every time I tried to uninstall it, it just wouldn't completely do it. Like, every, uh, whenever I would try to uninstall it and go back into the uh, control panel, like, you know, under uninstall a program, it shows you the publisher. It said Logitech, ink, 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 ink. Like I had incorporated Logitech like seven times over <laughs> trying to install. So I have like 650% stockholder share in Logitech <laughs> now thanks to my webcam failure. I had oh, to right. like shut down my computer and do all kinds of bullshit to get it back up. It was stupid. Yeah, his audio is real good now, guys. So we're good to go. Um, yeah, his camera's a little <laughs> off. But... Nick, you are just wow. <laughs> Nick holding up some Green Day and Papa Roach records Your, right Yu-Gi-Oh now. Card, Command and Conquer, Renegade, and now fucking Papa Dude, Roach. Goodness. <laughs> I found some so, good I feel so guess. bad for the audio listeners because all Nick does is show stuff to the camera. <laughs> Nick is reliving the 90s right in front no, of us. I have some really great stuff in here, trust me. So, uh, I'm talking about his pants. We are oh, wow. back, and we do have a guest today in case people just didn't notice somehow. Um, Somehow they just and he the was he time. was off air for a little bit there, but uh, Mark Alsham Noah is here, and he just recently had a uh, well, not the best experience building his first PC, but uh, uh, <laughs> it took me a month to get the thing going. He got a beast of a rig. I believe he got what a thirty-seven seventy, thirty-five seventy, thirty-five seventy, and a six seventy uh, GPU. Yes, and. Uh, Initially had the wrong motherboard, but uh, I put the PC together perfectly, 100%. The first time, it was just that my motherboard was not compatible with the processor, and I had no idea because I'm stupid. It needed <laughs> really, to have you can blame iOS. KB Mod for that. You wow, can't... dude. I, well, I mean, I went <laughs> why up are to we, why are we the processor, so it was my fault. <laughs> but uh, Philip from PC Part Picker rescued him. <laughs> Very much so. So sent like paid an arm and a leg to send me a processor overnight through FedEx. Yep. I I just don't even understand (laughs) how we got that done so quick. But good uh, thing you didn't send it with Tom Hanks, dude. You'd never get it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh God. So uh, so you're not well. You're not relatively new to PC gaming, but you did get your new new rig. 
Um, but you've been playing. How long have you been a WoW player? Because that's a lot. A lot of people since since 2005. Uh, I got it for Christmas in 2005, so uh, over seven years now. Wow, or almost seven years. Yeah, I yeah. got it in 05 as well. I played. Uh, I played Final Fantasy Nine, I believe, it was, or was it Eleven? I think was the first online one, and I played that for the free month. Like paid for the game, and they got the free month, and it was horrendous. It was so bad. <laughs> and then uh, my friends in my Counter Strike clan. We're like, we should probably play this WoW game in like the month after. So I got WoW, and then it, it's I'm still subscribed. Wait, so. back up. You had a Counter Strike clan? Yeah, we had a server and everything, dude. <laughs> I like less and less people involved with KB Mod. Dude, you just hate Counter Strike so much. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my friend convinced me to get it uh, back in 2005, and I came. So late 2005 was around the AQ patch. So 1.9 was when I came in. Yeah. So pretty pretty late into vanilla, really, because um, then Burning Crusade Were came out. Were you on for the event? Well, it did come out in 2007, so I was a, a playing vanilla for a while. But I remember the first computer that I played it on, oh, it was so bad. Like, I would get on the Zeppelin from Orgrimmar to go to uh, where Undercity is, and by the time the loading screen had finished, I was back in Duratar again. <laughs> my, my computer was that terrible. <laughs> yep, that was used to be, uh, you can ask John, I used to play on this laptop uh which actually I played up on until last year when it finally died but it uh I would I had to have people log in my account and take me out of cities <laughs> so I could do anything so I'd have John like log in and move my guy to the to the raid instance mm-hmm. and then I would log back in cuz I couldn't log <laughs> in in town it just would never load <laughs> so <laughs> but uh the things people do to play WoW. Yeah, dude. <laughs> there was some sacrifices were made. <laughs> it's an addiction, but it's an addiction that you you come to love. Yeah, that's the bad part. That's the. That's, yeah, that's Especially the worst bad. part. It's, it's, you don't. You, that was vanilla. I'm pretty was sure that's really all addictions, addictions, Brandon. No, I think I think if you ask a heroin addict, I think a lot of them be like, "Well, this actually really sucks, but I kind of have to do it at this point." Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what I mean. Is like with WoW, you you know you know that you're wasting your life away, but you're also kind of enjoying it. Yeah. Is there a point in your World of Warcraft? career where you're like wow i probably should have just picked up heroin instead uh <laughs> actually when, <laughs> when well, i was a lot cheaper habit when i was pvping and going for high warlord i uh there were times when i was like i should probably just fucking stop this were you were you running with a battle group like like a i was running with a battle group were, uh, trading and, warlord and i would play uh all night and then john would play my character all day oh yeah 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 yep. <laughs> I, I knew so, several people that had like three people playing on one account to get High Warlord. It was crazy. It was. I think I got Legionnaire, and I still have my character that has a title. I, I'll never let that character general, go. I have General Jot still. <laughs> from, nice. But it that character will have. I should have sold the account when I got General. I mean, even like getting $2, Legionnaire, $2. I had to average a lot of honor points per week to keep that up. It, it was a lot of hours. D- nowhere near what people did for High Warlord, but it was enough to like make me go. Yeah. I, Fuck that! I'm not going for High Warlord ever. Yeah, I had to, I had to get like a hundred k honor a week, and that took hours to get to get to Legionnaire. It was nuts. Legionnaire was probably like the max you could get to if you by yourself, were yeah, one person and had a job. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I didn't have a job at the time, so that wasn't an issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was like 16, so I didn't have one either. Uh, when I, dur- during summer vacation, like I was playing WoW for like 10 hours a day. It was really uh, bad. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so, so that was kind of your intro. And I know you played, you're playing like Left 4 Dead and stuff on your old computer mm-hmm. up until now, and and a, lot, a bunch of other games too. But yeah, I didn't have a lot of games on my old PC. Like I, I, I could play a lot of Source games because obviously those were optimized really well, so it was no big deal. It was yeah. like trying to record PC games on that old computer was atrocious because I didn't have a hard drive that could handle DX Story, so I had to use Fraps. But then Fraps would completely bog down games for me, so I just had to like record at half size. Yeah, it was stupid. Yep. But everything's fine now. I can play every any game that I want to on high settings. It's no big deal. But really, you went through the uh, the most. You you made it through the most addicting PC game ever in World of yeah. Warcraft. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you've I've you've got been there. almost five thousand hours in WoW probably. Oh, I think I'm probably over that. Yeah, you probably. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> 
I think I don't my... think I have five thousand hours in video games. <laughs> <laughs> my hunter you has. Five, you have five thousand hours in life. Yeah, I don't think I do. I'm I know on sure one I don't. Count. On my uh, on my warrior that I've had since day one, I have a hundred and nine days played on that, so that's twenty five hundred hours or so. So uh, when did you? One character. When did you start doing uh, YouTube? I'm guessing you did console first. Well, uh, I was doing YouTube uh, on a different account before I did all shame no wow. I was uploading rock band videos, um, <laughs> and then I closed that account. Like I started like late two thousand eight and early two thousand nine, and was uploading rock band videos for about a year. And then I uh, changed my gamer tag and started a new channel whenever I got a, uh, a PVR. And my brother bought me a microphone for my birth, well, like an early birthday present. And then I started uh, doing commentaries on All Shame No Wow. So that's when that started back in March 2010. Yeah. So, wow. I didn't start. I started December 2010. So that- We're not talking about you, Dan. Yeah. Wow, dude. <laughs> wow, dude. Mr. <laughs> Closing Accounts, like nothing else over here <laughs> rage quitting the tubes left and right it was um, funny because he actually yeah. found his channel on a uh, an archive yeah uh, it was <laughs> that was the greatest shit ever yeah, seen a subscriber of mine sent me my channel back when it, i had like 622 subscribers <laughs> i still have alex in my box that sounds really. That sounds <laughs> awful. That actually sounds really awful right now. I've, I've ne- once, once you, once you go Nick Fenton's box, there's no rhyme to it. You just stay in there. <laughs> box for box, Alex. He's still there. It says he has no subscribers. We're, and you we're, scissor, we're scissor boxing. Yeah. Scissor boxing. You're in my box. So, Mark, you have all your PC issues squared away. And <laughs> Philip got you taken care of. Oh yeah, everything is good. I haven't had a single problem with this computer, other than just some games being kind of wonky, but that's just games being stupid. I haven't had any hardware issues or anything like that after I got the uh, the BIOS flash and everything up to date, so well, everything's good. good. At least it's working well. I'm guessing it was a step up. What was the old computer? Uh, it was a i7-920, which isn't a bad processor. No, it's not bad. Uh, but I had a GTS 250, which Ooh, was... Ooh, that yeah. is a bad thing. <laughs> really old school. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. nearly obviously Jesus All, Almost obviously Jesus <laughs> <laughs> I think had, the, had but, the graphical power that I did like six years ago. The only <laughs> game that I ever could not play on my old computer was All Points Bulletin, APB. But that's just because that game was... It's just stupid. I had memory <laughs> issues with that, and it would just crash all the time. But most games I could actually run, even if it was just, you know, kind of bad frame rate, frame rate between, like, 30 and 40 FPS, which I could play. It wasn't a big deal, but most games were, were fine, the ones that I played, because I just stayed away from games that I knew were going to be intensive. Yeah, yeah. But now I've got uh, a million <laughs> games on Steam after the summer sale. So. <laughs> yeah, good time to build. If you... <laughs> Speaking of a good time to build. Yes. August yeah. is apparently the wow. best of months to build. I, I saw that build guide. Good God, dude. That is nuts. Now I wish I would have waited to build a computer because <laughs> I would have gotten like a, a 3770K and a Z77 motherboard. Everything would have been like top notch. Yeah. I can't believe you guys packed that much into a $1,300 build. It's well, nuts. We think, if you guys haven't seen the build guides yet, you can check them out. Um, no, we just released out. the build guides today if you're if you're watching this on the stream if you're listening to it we released a few days ago but uh the bills this month are are ridiculous definitely the most bang for buck we've ever gotten out of builds well we basically i mean we didn't we didn't make any compromises compared to last month's build it was pretty much direct upgrades yeah and i i think it's probably due to a lot of back to school sales um yeah, well, I was, when I was looking at the prices, it's it's kind of just small small price drops on a lot of different things. Like the uh, the hard drive came down slightly, SSDs continue to come down, uh, um, case prices are really good. So just just a lot of components, really really good prices right now. I think you're right. Back to school, whatever it is, the the prices are right. Yeah, so it's, I mean, when you're when you're bottom tier guide has a 2500 k and a 7870 in it it's doing pretty well for 800 bucks uh, that's way like, more power than i had like for how this much would a computer of that like that comparable power? parts how much would that cost like a year ago like year even with the 800 well, build well, I, I think a year ago that would probably be like around a thousand i would say and like so not 75 000. i would say when i built in 2010 that power of a computer would have been over a thousand 
I would say. Oh, easy, easy. Yeah. Well, and and it, the thing is, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been nearly as comparable because the Sandy Bridge was such a large step up from pretty much <clears throat> everything before it. Yep. So you're really getting you're getting a ton of power now because you can put Sandy Bridge in those in those low price points. So, um, the other thing is we got a lot of questions um, on Twitter and also in the comments as to why we put the Ivy Bridge in there rather than 2600K because the 2600K overclocks very well. We don't think about overclocking when we make these guys. We think about. Well, so here, hold on, hold on. Let's, go ahead, let's, Brandon. Let's go down the builds real quick compared to last month. So if you kind of follow our build guides, the changes we made, the starter build looks pretty similar with the exception of we basically just got to upgrade from a 7850 to a 7870. Twin Frozer, too. Very yeah, nice. Twin Frozer, great card. Um, so that the, the starter build just got stronger by, you know, by a little bit. Um, for the enthusiast and professional, our, our two higher-end builds, we took out the 2600K and the old... Um, I think we had a P67 motherboard, yeah. or Z68, I don't know. Um, took those out and upgraded to the 3770K, the new kind of basically Ivy Bridges 2600K um, with a new motherboard. And most of the other stuff stayed the same. We just had to change video cards to uh, MSI because the prices on those cards are really good. Mm -hmm. And it enabled us to, to get in under our price points. Um, so like Dan said, I, I mean, I would personally consider the 3770K to be a direct upgrade from the 2600K. I mean, there, after looking at this month's build, uh, builds, I don't, I don't really know that there's a reason for you to get a 2600K. You should either be getting, I think, a 2500K, or if, if you do want the hyper-threading, if you, if you do more of those CPU-intensive tasks, I would say go ahead and go Ivy Bridge, because the... They're, they're still more powerful, and they still overclock well. It's just that Sandy Bridge overclocked insanely well. Yep. So I don't I don't think the you know because it overclocks a little worse than Sandy Bridge. I don't think that's any reason to push but, you off of Ivy Bridge. But we really don't factor that in very much, guys. Because not, I would say probably even the majority of PC gamers are not going to get a processor and overclock it. I would well, say that. I did not. So. And that might be like a tie-breaking factor for us, but it's not going to be it's it's not going to be weighted very heavily when we're looking at this stuff. So, but the thing is that like these builds are ridiculously good. The only one I would I would say this is a great time to buy. The only one I might wait on if you're looking at around that eight hundred dollar price point somewhere around there. Uh, the we'll we'll talk about it in a little bit, but the six sixty Ti is going to be coming out soon. And that, um, I don't know that we'll be able to fit that in our, in our low build. It'll but, be tight. <laughs> you know, we, we, put our, we put ourselves oh, at yeah. a $100 price point. You know, if you're buying an $800 <laughs> build, you might be able to spend like 825 or something. And yeah. getting a 660 Ti might, might be well worth it. So you may want to hold off a, a few weeks and look at that if, if you're in the market for a new PC. All right, guys. So there you go. If you're in the market, even for some parts, if you're looking to upgrade some parts, this looks like a really good month to do it. Lots of rebates and all that kind of stuff out there. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with the news. Running the ads? Hitting yep. the ads? Yeah. I love all the theories about what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm, si I'm sitting on a yoga ball, and I just Wait, bounce. why are you sitting on a yoga ball? You getting all... It's supposed to be for my posture, but He's all doing I do is end up playing exercises. Like I, <clears throat> Ernest Lee was it's using one of those. Posture, like when I sit in my chair, I like slouch to like the side for some reason, and it messes up my back, and then I have to go to the chiropractor, and that's not fun. So they suggest getting a yoga ball. Is my video up? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay, but also people think I'm humping things, which is also possibly <laughs> true. Can't confirm or deny. Or that I'm sitting on Scott. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting Scott, Scott is quietly on the podcast. Sense. It'd be great if he started answering Twitter questions and we'd be like, "What? Fu where's Scott?" And he just like you comes see him, up like mumbling in the Nick background. In frame. <laughs> yeah, like his head just pops up from the side. Yeah, he just sits up. It's like, from uh, behind what you. do you think, Scott? <laughs> All right, so we are back, bros, and uh, we're just gonna dive right into the news here. And the first thing is we mentioned that. Um, the old Republic, they were considering going free to play, and they made like a free to level 15 trial. They basically did what WoW did. Yeah, but it, in a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. A lot faster. 
Um, so now, though, you can play up till max level, it looks like, uh, Should coming we this fall. all act like we're, like, surprised or something? Like, Dude, it was going to take down every MMO that's uh, out, bro. I'm, I'm honestly, I am kind of <laughs> surprised they did it this quickly. Maybe that quickly, but, like, it was... It was well, they never. just dipped under a million subscribers, which... And that's why they did it. ...is quite sad, to be honest. I think they wanted, I think they wanted to stop the bleeding. So, uh, first steps to... The first step is, uh, in August, well, now, the game is now only $15 instead of 60 and, uh... So you're just paying for your first month's subscription. Yeah, and then a, <laughs> and then a sub after that. Um, there's going to be a bunch of microtransactions called cartel coins, and uh, you can get all cosmetic things with them so far. And I love this number at the end of the PC Gamer article. S Star Wars The Old Republic has lost almost 25% of its subscribers since January, not surprisingly when everyone hit max level and realized there was no end game. <laughs> so... Um, it's one more step, and they asked the question at the end of the PC Gear model. That, does this spell the end of the subscription-only model? I think no. it's I think it's a step, but I think for RPGs you may see that end at some point. But uh, Call of Duty is going to be monthly subscription soon, so good luck to you, Call of Duty players. <laughs> but uh, I mean, but in the article, isn't the guy quoted saying that? Uh, that it's time to move away from a subscriber model. I mean, honestly, if Star Wars wasn't at the state it is now with its subscriber base, they'd never go to free to play. Not ever. No, no, no. chance. This is EA. They'd still, dude. Be at, they'd still be at fifteen dollars a month forever if they could hold what three million, four million players. If they could hold that much, they'd never go any other option than subscription. No. But yeah, they hunt, they put a lot of money in this game too. A and there lot are of so money. many restrictions on free to play. It's nuts. I looked at the list. That is crazy amounts of uh, restrictions. Which I mean, honestly, you don't want to do end game. Level some characters and get the story out of it. Trust me, that's all you'll need to do in the old republic. That's all it's worth. Yep. Just level up some characters, enjoy the story because that's that's the only good part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I, I I mean I think the subscription model's on its way out. I'm kind of surprised that we haven't seen more games try anything but a $15 subscription. I think there's probably still room in the market for like a 5 to $10 subscription type game, but all the games want to do $15 a month. And the thing is that unless, unless you're offering WoW level quality, because that's the standard, unless you're offering that kind of quality, you just can't charge $15 a month. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like when it. I was... When I was playing WoW, I felt like I was getting my money's worth at $15 a month for the amount I was playing, but very few games are going to offer that. And, you know, I don't even know that Star Wars did, and except maybe for for Star Wars fans. So, I think I think there could be a $5 a month game, but then again, I think that if you're going to try and make a $5 a month game, you're probably better served by trying to figure out how to make it free to play and yeah. You know, pay, it seems I like free to play plus plus plus. I pay five bucks a month to play Bioshock Two multiplayer. <laughs> you might have to to get people to play. You yeah, might have to pay yeah, them you five dollars. You take the five dollars and be paying people to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think whatever happens with Guild Wars Two is gonna like set some sort of yeah. standard when it comes to how MMOs will do, uh, like a microtransaction model rather than subscription based. Yep. So like, see if if I, that I has any success. MMOs MMOs can do free to play the easiest, I think, because everyone in MMOs wants the cosmetic stuff. Yeah. Yep. Like you look mm -hmm. at WoW has WoW has done it from both ends. They charge a subscription and people buy twenty five dollar mounts. Yep. I mean, if they, I if they just took away subscriptions and did nothing but make different mount models and sold them, they'd probably make more they, money. They would still break, <laughs> they would at least break even. They could take away the sub, and I bet you they'd still I be profitable. Sell, sell pets for pet battles and sell mounts. That's all you <laughs> got to do. Once it hit like Wrath and Wow and Wrath of the Lich King and Wow started doing all the mount stuff, started coming in. Like that's around when it started coming in really. Um, once that started happening, half the guild, and people did this anyway, half the guild we were in just kept, like, a full bag of RP clothes. Not RP clothes, really, but just, like, you know, just, like, a broom and, like, a dress and, like, <laughs> you know, all kinds of just weird shit to put on your character. So. But that's the best kind of free-to-play. The, the stuff that they describe for the free-to-play versus subscription in, in Star Wars, it still seems like if you actually want to play the game with any sort of sincerity 
that you you kind of still have to pay the subscription because of all these restrictions. I, I don't know. I, I I think they'll probably have to ease up to try and keep their player base high. Yeah. Maybe maybe they can still do it, but I think you're going to see a lot of people doing drive-bys. You know, they'll they'll make a character, they'll play it for a little bit, and then they'll leave. Mm-hmm. Yep. So on to another Star Wars game, which looks a lot more promising. Uh, Star Wars thirteen thirteen, which is kind of like a more. Uh, it's like a more serious like. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like a, like a spin-off. Like it's not usually what you would see in a Star Wars game, really. It's like bounty hunters, right? Yeah. And and it's the graphics are ridiculous for one thing, but uh, yeah, they're they're absolutely good. amazing. Um, but it's supposed to be. Yeah, I love this. Claimed it even had the best graphics the world has ever seen. So there you go. They're pretty. <laughs> I confident. love to make subjective statements. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's supposed to be like way more brutal than other games, not nearly as cartoony as other... Not that, like, Knights of the Old Republic and stuff was cartoony. Uh, for those of you who are listening to the audio, Alex is a fucking vampire right now, and it's <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Jesus. He's um, about to understand seduce what that is. Stewart. <laughs> she has no emotion on her face, regardless. I'm going to um, give you a blood transfusion after the podcast. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> yeah. But um, <laughs> PC Gamer posted a little video interview with... Uh, the people making it, um, the ILM visual effects guys, and of course LucasArts. Um, so keep your eye on that game. I don't know that it has I'm excited. a release yet. I looked at other articles on it, but I don't... I think Is it 2013? I think it might I think, be. I think so. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. But like, keep your eye out for that. The game looks so good, though, visually. Oh, and I think, goodness, like, I yeah. think it was confirmed to be on like consoles or something and that's why people were like oh my god the new consoles are coming because like you'd have to run that game at like four frames a second on a 360 i was was not able to watch the whole gameplay interview i didn't know if they mentioned what engine it was on but um i don't think they did keep your eyes on that one guys uh it'll be a total departure um and in my opinion the last few star wars games have been pretty much crap so hopefully this one is Hey, good. The Force Unleashed was pretty good. It was all right. <laughs> it ran like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, moving on to AMD, yes, they have made the news again. Somehow, some way, they're staying relevant. Uh, but this is a good thing, and this is a good thing for everyone if it actually works out. Because right now, Intel, of course, has us all by the balls. Um, they could pretty much put whatever prices they want on chips. As Alex zooms in on himself, this is just like creepy right now. A really awkward grin too. You don't uh, need to comment on it. Just let me do it. <laughs> I can't. So I can't. AMD rehired uh, Jim Keller, who is. I actually didn't know who he was, but once they mentioned what he had designed, I knew immediately the impact he could have. He's been at Apple for the past few years designing their their processors for uh, iPhones and stuff, but when he was at AMD. He designed the AMD 64 line, which uh, at the time was as good, if not better, than Intel, at least for gaming in a lot of situations. The AMD FX chips at the time were absolutely insane. Uh, They were also insanely expensive, but they were really, really good chips. And it was really the last time, I would say, that AMD had the the total upper uh, upper hand, even for a little bit. Um, So it'll be exciting to see if they can... uh, they can make something new. I know they're not focusing on that market anymore, but they're still coming out with new chips for it. So um, hopefully he can bring them back a little because it's good for all of us if AMD can actually make something good. Because right now, Intel could pretty much put whatever they want out at any price, and we'd be we'd pretty much have to pay it <laughs> if you wanted the uh, if you wanted the performance. So it's, it's nice to at least see kind of a fresh face that. Back at AMD, who was there when they were making really, really strong desktop chips. Yep. And even though, you know, obviously it sounds like their strategy is kind of shifting because they're sort of seeding the desktop market. Um, you know, they're still they're still going to be around in the desktop space. They've got billions and billions of dollars invested in in uh, in that market. And so, at least, you know, I think. They're not going to, I don't think they're going to give up the server market. And, you know, those are essentially the desktop chips, too. So, you know, I think this is good for AMD. It's, it's, they looked like they were flailing. They still kind of do. But, you know, if they can make more hires like this, 
Maybe they can come back. It would just be, it'd be a good thing for everybody. Um, not to mention I loved AMD for many years, but that's besides the point. It's not uh, like it really needs the help at this point. <laughs> but uh, up next, we have something that I never actually thought I would say. Uh, Source 2. Definitely. <laughs> uh, inside the Source Filmmaker files, they found references to Source 2 um, in the code, which frankly is exciting because Valve has always maintained that this was, it wasn't a thing. They were just going to They've just been expanding on Source for, like, and it's long. I can't, Forever. I can't argue with it, to be honest. It's, it's still a pretty like a decent, good-looking engine. engine. Like, Isn't it, like, 10 years old or something? Like eight that? years old now. Oh, oh four. Okay. Yes. Like, Portal Counter-Strike 2 looked source. pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, Portal 2 looked amazing, especially with everything up. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it kind of is getting on. Like, 10 years, once it gets up to about 2014 here, I mean, you got to think, how much more can you do to that engine to really make it new again? Not a whole lot. <laughs> You're going to have to do something else. Um, but I hope it is Source 2. I mean, they really need it. You know, you never know. They may launch Half-Life 3 with Source 2, which would make a lot of sense. Um, KB Mod uh, starting rumors. You heard yeah. it here first. <laughs> <laughs> that probably Half-Life does, 3 release date <laughs> I think that probably does make the most sense to because obviously that's their that's coming out at some point we don't know when but it would make sense for that to be sort of a not just the game itself but something groundbreaking in terms of Valve's direction and a new engine you know would, would that would be like the biggest announcement ever Yeah. on top of Half-Life 3 which is already the biggest announcement ever so yeah. The world might actually implode. Yeah, <laughs> Gaben flies out. Oh man! This, this is what they flies. Sent Curiosity yeah. Report to find. They sent it to find the Source Engine Two. That <laughs> oh yeah. Also a copy of Half Life Three. That's what it's there for, guys. You didn't know. NASA. <laughs> fuck NASA life on They announced that all at the same time. This. Google would be like, "What the fuck?" Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All the sort search hits would be happening that day. It's just like a 256 by 256 thumbnail of a Half-Life 3 <laughs> picture. <laughs> Black and white. That entire, Gaben that is entire on Mars. rover was just a... Gaben lives on Mars, dude. Gaben's on Mars. He doesn't even have like a suit. He's just living on Mars. It's like, oh man. That'd Reddit, Reddit, yeah, would, Reddit implode. would implode. There, there is so much karma would just cause the internet to cease to exist for a day because of Reddit. <laughs> I love Reddit. Gaben is Mars. That's a All good point. Argon- <laughs> he is Mars. All of the Argon Wild posts would be people like posing next to <laughs> pictures of Gaben. Yeah. <laughs> or like putting pictures of Gaben inside them. <laughs> All the titles would have, have Half Life in it with the F in half. Yep. Brackets. <laughs> in the brackets and the brackets. Hey, I know I'm known for my broccoli photos, but here's Gaben. <laughs> Lay XD Gaben. Yeah. Uh, God. All right. So away from Reddit <laughs> to uh, what we referenced earlier: World of Warcraft on the downward spiral. Uh, loses 1.1 <laughs> million players over the last three months, and I'm pretty sure that makes the sub base under 10 million now, which it was at 11 million in January. So things are not things are not going well over there, which we will delve into even more <laughs> later on in the cast. But WoW has pretty much lost all the luster, and the hardcore crowd that kept it afloat for a lot of years, and actually I think kept a lot of casual players around just wanting to kind of be a part of the game, uh, that's all gone. So there's not much to keep people there anymore. Uh, and pandas are dumb. That would be that would be uh, the other thing I would say. Pandas I hate her. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, really. I don't understand the panda hate whatsoever. I really I don't understand don't. why they put pandas them in. Pandas are though. cool. It's 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 just such a lowbrow thing to the stand. The Pandarian race is in the war, in the Warcraft lore. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, that's all you have to stab at is the fact that there's pandas. I, then I, I do then, remember playing really. Warcraft 3 and seeing the pandas. I'm like, that's There's retarded. no, there's no end game. The, pan, the pandas are dumb. There's no end game anymore. The t- talent trees are horrendous. They completely... Hold on, Nick, can you do the WoW fanboy voice again? What, do you, what should I say? 
I, I don't know. You just you sound like can you... you can you squeal like a pig in the wild fang? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we may have lost Mark. I'm not sure though. Uh, no, I'm still just here. The cam. It's just being stupid. Right. Your audio is great. Every time the cam goes out, your audio gets better. Um, <laughs> You know, I have to wonder because a lot of people are on the the annual pass for WoW, you know, because of the deal. Yeah. I have to wonder how much their <laughs> sub numbers are even being propped up by the annual pass. Yeah, subs. I mean, I'm I'm still subscribed. I don't have it installed. So I don't know, but I mean, sub yeah. numbers always go down at this time. Three to Summer. four months before the new expansion, sub numbers were always down, and especially in not the by one point one million though. Uh, it's it's eh. I mean they still got what nine million subscribers. They're they're not dead yet. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah, I mean it's it's on the decline for sure. But this this is pretty much the low point every time. Like everyone quits yeah. right now, and because they all plan to come back at the expansion. Well, there so also thought... there also hasn't been an end game cycle, a new end game cycle since uh, like. October, November. Yeah, yeah Dra Dragon Soul came out November, October, November. Yeah, last somewhere year. in there. Yeah, so it's been almost an entire year of that crap, and people yeah. people killed Doing heroic Deathwing within first couple months. Reading yeah. for the Sorcerer's Stone and all that. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't farm for that long. Like even in Wrath of our little guild, we had to. We were still trying to kill like heroic Lich King towards the end. So, <laughs> like, yeah, I think there's probably a lot of people. Um, at Blizzard that are moving on to other projects. It's pretty obvious Like if you're not releasing more in-game content to try and keep people involved, I think, I think we're seeing the last WoW expansion. I hope so because, I mean, it's, it's a 2004 title. It, it really needs to just move on. I mean, that's the only reason why it's getting to the point that it is. It's because it's outdated and they need to move on and completely overhaul a new game. To the point where uh, it it gets back to where the wild days were back in vanilla and Burning Crusade. Yep. So. I think there's such a large appetite for another Blizzard MMO. Yeah. Everybody wants those that that game that can give them the moments that WoW did in the early years, which Daisy's doing that for me right now. Yeah. And I'm hoping and I'm that, hoping but... that I'm hoping that Guild Wars Two can do something for me like that because wow, I've got so many memories of just bullshit that happened during vanilla and Burning Crusade. It's, yeah. it's it's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, totally with you on that. And Daisy really is doing that for me. Mm -hmm. The intensity and also the hilarity and everything. So we're else. just waiting for Titan to be announced, basically. Well, well, we'll discuss what? on whether or not Titan's going to be any good later. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but up next, Dawn Guard. This is just a bit of a quick hit, but Dawn Guard was released on PC despite Bethesda being like, "Well, more details on Dawn Guard," and then it was just out. So. <laughs> yep. Um, I didn't even know it was coming out until I was just like, oh, Steam? Hey, there's Dawn Guard. Yeah, okay. it's 15, yeah, they mentioned 15 bucks. Todd, is it? Todd Hollins had mentioned that on the first day of QuakeCon when he was introducing uh, the keynote. He was like, oh, by the way, yeah, Dawn Guard's out today. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really tell anybody. Thanks for all the support, guys. <laughs> Here's Dawn Guard. So I think, it's, uh, I think it's 15 bucks on Steam. It's 20. 20 bucks? Okay. Um, but... Uh, I'm interested in it because the vampires in Oblivion were sweet, and they also screwed your entire game over um, <laughs> at points, which was was not that great, but it introduces a new dynamic, so uh, you can be a vampire, I believe, or, or fight against them with the Legion of Light, or whatever they're called. So, Alex has just left. He's just left the room. <laughs> he just rolled um, out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Dawn Guard's out today, so you can pick that up. It will probably drop in price to 15 or something. I would like to see a follow-up expansion that's called uh, Breaking Dawn Guard. <laughs> Breaking <laughs> Dawn Guard. <laughs> Starring Kristen Stewart. Kristen oh, Stewart. God. Replace Lydia with Kristen Stewart. No. Oh, dude, I would run Kristen Stewart off a cliff and shit all day. <laughs> Kidding me? <clears throat> she wouldn't have any emotions about it, though. No, dude, she, bite, she bite her lower lip, dude. She'd have tons of bite her lower lip to talk yeah. about. <laughs> so that was just FYI in case you uh in case you weren't. And this last story here is really two stories. Um the the G four's GTX five fifty and five sixty cards, including the T I editions, uh, are nearing their end of life this month, and not surprisingly, the six sixty T I will be coming out soon. And uh, now Nick has left. Jesus. I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, 
the 560 Ti, that's part of the reason, at least in my mind, uh, that we took it out, besides being able to get a better car than the 7850. Um, a oh, couple now 7870. Now 7870. Uh, kind of knowing that the 560 Ti was going to start nearing its nearing its age at some point here. And the 660 Ti. We didn't know when it was coming, but we knew it was coming. Um, and it has been benchmarked by a couple sites. Um, the one I have is Tweaktown. And this thing crushes, man. Like, I think it's going to be around 300 bucks, probably. Probably a good ballpark. Yeah, I think yeah. that's probably where it'll land. And and as we expected, you know, it's basically just a little bit below a 670. I yeah, think they we'll benchmarked probably... it on Metro 2033, right? And it was only, I think, if I remember, it was like six frames below yeah. at 1920 by 1080. Yeah, and the, the sickest part is 3D Mark 11. It beat every AMD card but the 7970. <laughs> All of them. And well, no, no, no. <laughs> it, it actually beat the 7970 uh, regular edition on, on I uh, performance, and it did, but it didn't beat the gigahertz edition. Yeah. So yeah, basically that's that's the takeaway is that um, Tweak Town was benching just a just a reference 660 Ti. That's before it even gets into the hands of you know EVGA and the other manufacturers that are going to overclock it. So I. <laughs> I think we may be uh, reporting in a month or two about more AMD price drops. Yeah, yeah, we may be getting 7970s in the budget bill. <laughs> no, uh, that would be ridiculous. Um, so if you're looking for a new card and you didn't want to quite spend up to 670 levels, uh, the, TI, the 660 Ti is rumored to be out the 16th, but I don't think anything concrete has been said about that. Well, the, and, and the reference cards will probably be out then, but if you can afford to wait, the, the cards to wait for are going to be like, you know, your MSI Twin Frozer and your EVGA Superclocked, you know, the, the cards where for 10 or 20 bucks you can get the stock overclocked versions. So, but either way, 660 Ti is going to be probably the, I think it'll be this generation's 560 Ti in terms of probably the best bang for your buck um, if you can afford to spend, you know, around that $300 price range. Yep. So, that... Ends the news, bros. Keep an eye out for that car. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with the roundtable talking about Blizzard Activision and a lot of Bobby Kotick. <laughs> so stick mm-hmm. around. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't see Mark's picture. You don't see my what? You don't You're... see my video? No. No, it's loading in. But I can quick. see it on the stream. Well, on the stream, you're, like, choppy and freezing. And... All right, dude. I'll try to fix this, man. My videos just fuck it up over and over again. Yeah, it'll, your, it'll, sound, it'll... your sound gets better every time. Yeah, That's I know. Skype is really bad when it comes to uh, bandwidth allocation. Good thing I got this 16-core 10-meg pipe over here. <laughs> Good thing you bought that that button, but I just have the widget. <laughs> the GG widget? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. just that's my whole page. You're too cheap for a six dollar button. It's just that it, that's all it is. Is the is my little widget. <laughs> that sounds awfully dirty too. My little I widget. Think the, I think the ad bugged out that time. My little Whatever. widget. The my only GG I widget. need is Gamma Labs and Gunners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, bros. No. I believe we are back. The commercial actually bugged out. I think. Okay, there we go. Okay, we are back. <laughs> and uh, this week's roundtable, I'm actually going to link this to the stream, and we'll probably put a little link in. Uh, we should probably start putting news links in the podcast posts anyway, but. Um, Be my best. Yeah, I'll do it. Shit. <laughs> I got to blurb that fucker anyway. Um, so this thread on Team Liquid uh, pretty much goes into how Blizzard went from, in my opinion, the greatest gaming company possibly ever um, f- for for a good while there, and they certainly still have made the most important game of all time in World of Warcraft. Um, <laughs> Starcraft. No. Wow, Starcraft was... has more importance than World of Warcraft. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yes. all right, we're not going to get into this. Alright, but... I'm not half Korean for no reason. <laughs> yes, you are. You can't play Starcraft. Korean. Um... So basically, this entire thread is is shows how when the merger happened, um, which was July, 
like I think to 07 to 08 um, is when Activision and Blizzard merged into Activision Blizzard instead of just Blizzard. And at the time, I was like, man, that's I don't know about this, but I wasn't really into the whole news side of things that much at that point. And uh, as we've seen, and we've talked about a lot with World of Warcraft, of course, and then going into Diablo 3, which is just a complete flop, uh, complete disappointment, you've kind of seen the Activision mark slowly creep in. And I was like, no, nah, this won't affect Blizzard. They're Blizzard, man. <laughs> you can't. You can't change Blizzard. They're going to be fine. <laughs> They've made some of the greatest games of all time. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, but Bobby Kotick's like the, the T-1000 Terminator. He <laughs> is kind of like the T-1000 Terminator. He's like Terminator. fucking indestructible. And every time you think like you can keep him out, he's like, no, I'll just liquefy and just like walk into the room anyways. <laughs> yep. Yep, and financial reports. <laughs> so this That's thread. All I care about. Now, a little disclaimer, kind of, but although all of these are legit links and stories and everything, um, this is this is a forum thread on Team Liquid. It's not like you know a professional journalist like connected the dots and found some crazy shit or something. But basically, these are all. Uh, Bobby Kotick was made CEO of Activision Blizzard. And Vivendi had the controlling interest, but he was kind of the main guy. And I don't know that that was really a known fact at the time, but uh, basically it was about that time in, when Blizzard started introducing all their microtransactions, which weren't a thing before. There was character transfer, but that was it, really. Um, and that was actually kind of... Nobody really thought anything of that one because it was kind of a necessity. Um, you know, you're, at the time there was really no, no other way to move to play with friends or anything. There still really isn't, but, um, you couldn't play across servers or anything like that. So, uh, so all the microtransactions start coming in and then we see all the expansions and then we see WoW get dumbed down gradually over the years, slowly but surely. Um, and basically at a certain point, uh, and this is when you kind of started to see the Activision thing of running a franchise into the ground, as they've done with Call of Duty, as they did with Guitar Hero, as they did with Tony Hawk. Um, it's almost impressive how it actually, consistent yeah. they are. How many titles they released from Guitar Hero was like, I can't believe they were able to release that many titles. <laughs> like 25. So if you go, go into this thread on November 6, 2008, Activision Blizzard drops titles like Brutal Legend, which ended up in a lawsuit, and Double Fine, who are known as real good guys in the whole gaming industry was cut. Ghostbusters, Riddick, Assault on Dark Athena, Wet, and a few others. They do not fit in the new business model. <laughs> Sierra Entertainment also got shut down in this. Um, Kodak said, with respect to franchises that don't have the potential to be exploited every year across every platform with cl clear sequel potential that can meet our objectives of, over time, becoming $100 million plus franchises, that's a strategy that has worked very well for us. So basically, any game that wasn't going to make them $100 million and they couldn't put on everything and just run it into the ground, they just cut. So <laughs> that was their business strategy back four years ago even. Yeah, but all of their shareholders are like furiously circle jerking to that memo that oh, he yeah. sent out, of where he's course. like, "We're only gonna do that," and they're all like, "Okay, okay, money, <laughs> money, money." <laughs> yeah, he's got this cartoon under it, and it's like three panels. Um, they're talking about exploitation. He's like, "We're gonna run these brands into the fucking ground." <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know what? Let's go back to being exploited. No, I like that better than yeah. doing this. <laughs> so. Um, and this is all shows just Bobby Kotick. Um, you guys thought David Demartini was a dickhead. Kotick takes the cake in this thread. I mean, this is. I don't just... know who has the more evil smile. I know, dude. And they both have very awfully just maniacal kind of smiles. It's like <sighs> it's a little offsetting. So um, after Brutal Legend, which was the Double Fine game, um, Tim Schafer. Etc. The guys who made Psychonauts, um, the new kick, the the Kickstarter that kind of started that trend. Um, in 2009, uh, Activision sued Double Fine, <laughs> which was now under being published by EA instead because Activision axed it. Um, 
They sued shortly after the game got really high praise at E3 that year. Well, gee. <laughs> what do you know? Title gets tons of buzz. We cut it. Well, now we're pissed. Um, they claimed that they never ho- handed over contract for Brutal Legend or any of this. And, um, and then, it, <laughs> I mean, it's just, this whole thread is just unbelievable. I'm trying to find some of the bigger quotes here, because it is a very long thread. Oh, here we go. This is the even better one. Um, this is talking about games like, like the Tony Hawk and Guitar Hero franchises, which we just mentioned. They, uh, they have just run into absolute shit at this point. Um, I think Guitar Hero's done. I don't even know. That yeah, they're... it's completely done. I never mm-hmm. thought Lost People and Red Octane was completely close. Wow. So, <clears throat> um, Activision Blizzard announced that it was going to raise the price of games, starting with Modern Warfare 2, and games with additional hardware like Tony Hawk Rider, Guitar Hero, and DJ Hero. Kotick mentions to an analyst that if it were up for him, he'd raise the prices even higher. So, he wanted, like, Eighty, ninety dollar games, pretty much across the board, um, and then he wanted to. They basically want BattleNet 2.0. That that starts coming around in 09, starts getting put in. There's there was parts of it that were implemented with uh, with Warcraft and of course StarCraft 2. That's what it was really built for, um, and it is a lot like uh, the BattleNet interface. is a lot like Xbox Live. Um, and they want to put ads all over that thing now. Um, so it's just lots of, uh, lots and lots and lots of really sneaky shit from Kodak. Um, basically running the Blizzard products into the ground. And you can see what's happened to WoW. That's the most glaring example with the mm-hmm. dumbing down. Because Call of Duty's done it. We all know Call of Duty's done it. But. Um, and I didn't even see the parallel, probably because I was too blinded by the whole WoW, being in WoW for so long. But it's pretty much the same thing as Call of Duty, is what's happened to that game. I mean, every year it gets simplified. And every year World of Warcraft got easier and easier and easier. And look at Diablo 3 compared to Diablo 2. Uh, much easier game to play. You can get items handed to you for a fee. <laughs> So it's obvious it's obvious that their you know that their goals I think Blizzard is definitely feeling some uh some uh, sort of uh pressure from the Activision side or you know I mean basically they now have to answer to the same set of shareholders so they kind of have to have a unified vision and and Blizzard has always sort of been the blockbuster 100 million dollar plus franchise type of company but it was kind of by accident you know they just happened to make really good games that all turned into huge hits whereas now they they're kind of that that formula is trying to be exploited mm-hmm. um, so i think it's I, I i don't know that i agree with you um to the point that that you know you feel so vehemently about blizzard i, I mean i still think blizzard makes a good product and hopefully that I, I really see the thing for me is that I can give a pass to a lot of the things that have that have happened in Blizzard products uh, recently things like no no land play on StarCraft you know I can kind of see why why they didn't include it um, because you have your you have you want to try and keep the integrity of your your online leaderboards and all that um, not saying not saying they shouldn't have included it. I'm just saying that's one thing that like I can kind of see the other side of it from their perspective. Um, they you know, and they obviously want people paying for the game, and it hasn't detracted from its popularity at all. Right. Uh, and when you look at something like like Diablo three, I think the you know I personally think the real money auction house is probably uh, at this point somewhat of a failure, um, and and. You know, I don't think the game's going to have the kind of longevity that Diablo 2 did. Well, that's why but, there's three expansions scheduled, Brandon. Right, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, but the thing is, the thing is that um, Diablo 2 did have a lot of problems with, like, the hacking and the... You well, know, I, the still, I still will defend the Always Online for Diablo 3. It's just... No, no, no. I, I, yeah, but we're talking about separate issues, though. The Real Money Auction House is a way to try and tighten up the, you know, the the illegitimacy of a lot of the stuff that went on in Diablo 2. 
And so I can kind of see that, but I also, you know, I think the, the real money auction house is a little bit more transparent in that they're just trying to sort of take take money for not doing any anything. You know, it's kind of the they're just they're just providing the servers there um, and and taking a nice profit from that. Um, but again, I think a lot of the stuff that Blizzard has done, um, I can kind of give a pass to. I think that we're going to see the the most telling thing will be with their next game. So the next game n that, that's not that's not like StarCraft or Diablo. I, I I'm I'm assuming I'm probably talking about Titan. Titan. So yeah, that's definitely think, the next game. I think that that is that is really going to be kind of the make or break for Blizzard from from a. Uh, a brand perspective because we all I mean the all the stuff in this article about Activision is not is nothing new it kind of, I mean it basically is just a chronicle of a company that doesn't really care about the experience they care about profits and trying to exploit their customers but Blizzard has traditionally been a company that does really care about the relationship with their customers and you know and they want to keep you playing their games you look at pretty much all Blizzard games they all have just really strong followings even more than like Valve games I think when you look at when you look at player retention yeah. you know Counter Strike has Counter Strike is, is a very popular game but you're going to see people vehemently defending uh, World of Warcraft and Starcraft and Warcraft 3 probably more so than something like Counter Strike yeah. but I think that with with a new IP I think that's when we're going to see if Blizzard is really a changed company because that's going to be the chance where they have to implement kind of the the profit seeking type things yeah, that Activision wants to do. It'll also be the first game that was fully developed under Activision Blizzard. Right, right. Uh, yep. D3 was started even before this. So um, even though obviously the game changed a lot since then, but a lot of that same stuff. So basically, I don't have a whole lot of faith in Titan being good at this point. Diablo 3 kind of took a little bit away. The the way Warcraft's ending, now it is a whole new IP, so you have a whole different way to start. But uh, basically, they changed uh, the way Blizzard works completely. Um, and this is the quote that really got me here from Kodak. Um, and this is... Basically, he's... You know, Blizzard employees used to have, like, incentive programs based on, you know, the game and, like... Uh, kind of rewarding excellence <laughs> um, not really I mean profits as well because they made a shitload of money anyway as Blizzard but uh, so here's Kodak on what he did to change the way people work at Activision Blizzard when, when they merged. Kodak noted in the past he changed the employee incentive program so that it really rewards profit and nothing else. You have studio heads who five years ago didn't know the difference between a balance sheet and a bed sheet who are now arguing allocations in our CFO's office pretty regularly. We have a real culture of thrift. The goal I had in bringing a lot of the packaged good folks into Activision about 10 years ago was to take all the fun out of making video games. <laughs> Ultimately, <laughs> Kodak doesn't want his employees to take anything for granted. They should always be aware of skepticism, pessimism, and fear in the midst of the global economic downturn. We are very good at keeping people focused on the deep depression, he said. <laughs> this is why Kodak is, is a douchebag, and it's not because of the what he does, is that there are environments in the business world, like insurance companies, that kind of thing, where this type of behavior is like, those companies are out to make money. There are tons of companies that are out to make money. He went to the video game world, yep. a world that he went is to the almost, wrong industry. Is almost as risky as like the film world. Like both are huge industries, yeah, but in terms of like own you. in terms yeah. of like banking money. I would not invest in either a movie studio or a video game studio because it's just the most risky money you can make because there's they're, they're like the biggest two industries where creativity meets large amounts of money and you have to have enough creativity but enough mass appeal and that that combination is so hard to find from one game to another it's impossible it doesn't happen that's why Blizzard is such an anomaly because they've had so many that have worked so yep. he went into this industry where it operates outside of like the Wall Street types where you can't just put shit into a spreadsheet and, and, and get numbers back. And he goes to an industry that was invented for fun. Nobody started video games because they're like, this is a great way to make money. And he acts like a complete douchebag. 
And that is why Bobby Cody's a douchebag, because he can't go be a, a cocksucker on Wall Street. <laughs> he has to go be a cocksucker running a video game industry. And 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 the contrast all this and that like this this uh environment of fear at, that he wants to create with Valve where everybody can just, you know, you work on whatever projects you feel like you need to work on, like everything is, you know, really conducive to making a really great product. Um, and it may sound like dick writing, but Valve is yeah the quintessential video game developer publisher company. And they, they make a they shitload do everything of money. Right, just they well. do everything right, and they make a shitload of money doing it. Yeah, Bobby Kotick is like the guy that asked out all the girls to the prom, and Valve did not shit, and Valve got every one of those girls <laughs> on its dick all the time. <laughs> and Bobby Kotick is sitting in the corner like. And, and Valve was like the nicest guy too. Like Valve was like, "Hey, I, I didn't really mean for this to happen. I was just trying to like have some fun on prom night." And then Bobby Kotick is so scorned and mad it's, in the corner. I tried so like, hard to get all these bitches. Like, walking Fuck in my head. you, Valve. No matter what Valve does, they can be the nicest people in the world. Every day, Bobby Kotick's like, "You fucking stole all my chicks on prom night. I will get you. I will end you. And this is how I'm gonna do it." He looks like the most jealous, sad little man. He looks tight. looks smaller than Dan. He's a tiny little <laughs> bitch. <laughs> but it's just, it, I just, how much autonomy can Blizzard really have at this point? Like, well, I think they probably have, I, I, I think they probably have some autonomy from, like, from Kodak. I think they probably still run a lot of their own day to day operations. But when you talk about strategic level stuff, mm -hmm. that's where Blizzard and Activision are probably going to have some similar strategies. And so that's where you see stuff like the real money auction house come into play because that's that's the revenue stream they're looking for. They don't have to spend any more money on that once it's developed. They just they just watch the money roll in. Yep. Also, and, wow, with the uh, the different like character transfers and remote auction house oh, and all. Yeah, that. exactly. And now, exactly. And now you can finally. We always wondered when we were playing. We we always wondered, and even even I know people who are like, man, I would pay five bucks if I could you know get that mount. Like before that existed as a thing. Yep. Yeah. And, and so but some some of that stuff i think is okay it's just that i i don't i don't know that i trust activision to determine what uh kind of what pay options make sense mm -hmm. i think i give i still have some trust in blizzard that they they could find a model like they kind of have with wow where where you're making money off a of subscription and you're making money off of you know cosmetic things or name changes or server transfers like I don't have a problem charging people for that because that's not something you have to do. That's something that if, if you want to hop around servers, then sure, you can pay to do it. Um, but I don't know. I feel like as we move more into the kind of free-to-play world and Blizzard will probably have to at some point you know, go, go that way or at least more that way than they have traditionally, um, I think that's when it will really come out because that's, that's when you can see good strategies and strategies that make sense and are customer centric, um, like kind of like Valve with TF2 and hats. Yeah. No one, has, no one has to buy hats. Everyone loves TF2, and Valve is still making a lot of money from an old title. So Blizzard could do something similar to that, um, but we'll, you know, we'll just have to see. The other thing too is is this this uh, this thread is really just kind of a damnation of Kodak himself. Like, yeah, it, it doesn't it matter. Is. It, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. You should never be saying something like, you know, the 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 goal I had was to take all the fun out of this. Like it, you could be you could be manufacturing toilet paper. You don't say <laughs> my goal was to take all the fun out of making toilet paper. My goal was to make sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> like that, not only not the fun I in want production, you to bleed. the fun in use too. <laughs> I don't want you to enjoy. But I mean, how much that. with this guy with this guy running the show, and you can't say stuff like that. Like, how do you feel as an employee, like of the, in that kind of a regime, like? How well, safe does your like, job feel? Like, yeah. How do you go to work and be motivated to work on games when that's the person at the head of of everything? They're saying he he wants to take all the fun out of making the game. I I have a hard time believing that you can make a good game if you're not having fun making it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the only reason you'd make it in the first place. Yep. And they uh. How you know if you were still somehow if you watched this podcast I have a feeling you weren't anyway but if you're still somehow feeling Black Ops Two is going to be a solid title I don't know what to tell you at this point because 
there's no way. And to me, there's no wow, way dude. Titan's going to be good. To, I'm still going to no free order Black Ops 2. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk bad about And Black ladies and too, gentlemen, man. thank Mark for coming on his last podcast. <laughs> 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 I thought that was going to be legitimate for half a second. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, it, it, video games, as you guys mentioned, it's a fun product. That's the whole point. So, if you take the fun out of making the game, I mean, how fun is it going to end up in the hands of, of the consumer? Of course, if your audience is 12 years old and has Call of Duty Elite, then, I mean, <laughs> I suppose that you don't have to make very much, but... Um, well, I, think, I, I think it really just shows that, that over the next decade or so, I think where we're really going to see the, the most uh, you know, innovative and, and fun games are going to be from the smaller studios, the, the high-res studios and the, um, and the zombie studios and, and the smaller developers on console and PC that you know, they are taking a risk, but they can maintain that autonomy. And, and they are... You know, largely making games because they love what they do. Yep. And and I think you know it's basically just showing that the Activision and EAs of the world they're still going to make money. I mean, they have a lot of franchises wow. that people That's love. It's debatable with EA, but Activision will. <laughs> well, they you know they still EA still has Madden. I mean, yeah. they could prob- they could probably live off Madden alone. But I think we'll we'll see a lot of innovation in in kind of the indie or smaller studio space. And I don't think that's a bad thing. No, not at all. But it, it, it's going in a troubling trend because you have, you have like companies like Crytek now that, you know, we don't know, but I can assume they might have been fed up with EA. So they go, the only way they can really get out of that contract is to say, we're going free to play, you know? Like, we're going to go make our shit on our own. But it, it, the, the only way for like indie games to get their stuff out there now in the marketplace, like in most business areas, is to give your product away free. And people will come if, if it has quality to it because they're not worried about price. But if the larger studios start putting out their AAA titles for free and, and monetizing them in some way, I don't see how an indie dev is going to get a game out there yep. anymore. Well, the thing is, I think it, the, the larger studios at this point can't afford to put their stuff out for free. That's why you their still... budgets. <laughs> no, that's why... You, I mean, I'm actually... I'm, I'll be interested to see like Star Wars The Old Republic, I- I'm interested to see if they can keep that game afloat with their free-to-play model. They spent because... so much money making yeah, that game. Yeah, I mean, one of the right. largest budgets of all like time Like fi- $250 million budget or something like that? For Most that of that on voice acting. <laughs> um. <laughs> 20 gigabytes of voice acting files? <laughs> or whatever number. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. It's something crazy I, like that. I think we'll always see competition from the smaller studios because they don't have the, they don't have the overhead of the huge studios, those a lot of a lot of the I mean EA and Activision think about just the amount of people they have in like marketing and and they have all that supply chain to package their product and stuff. You know most any any studio starting today doesn't have to worry about any of that. They can go all digital and reduce their costs. Whereas a lot of these these bigger companies can't do that. They've got to support their their legacy products. Yeah, that's true. True. So go check out that thread, guys, if you want to see the entire line of Codic Evil um, <laughs> from inception till the present day. Uh, it is actually a pretty good read, especially if you're interested in those games um, and one of the biggest developers that's out there. The blizzard uh, is collapsing. Yes, that's my <laughs> feeling. So we're going to take a quick break and then on to, of course, the Twitter questions, which is where shit will get weird. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you in, it never in just a minute. I know, but really, dude, I love Cody. <laughs> He's probably the best, dude. Nice selection of rapid fire as well. I, I just I, I love guy. that Penny, that Penny Arcade comic <laughs> where he's like he says exploited. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he says molested. <laughs> molested. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, let's go back to it into the group like, ground. Uh, <laughs> I just get, like, reading that thread when I was reading it at work, I was just like, I wasn't even getting enraged. It wasn't even mad. I was just like, it's like disappointment. is this guy for real? Like, it yeah, I, I had read all of those quotes before, and I was like, wow, he, he actually said this, and I knew this beforehand, and now I'm just seeing it all in one big list. Just a big pile of shit on top of some more shit. 
I mean, it's just crazy to me that... When you're reading four years of quotes, it, yep. <laughs> you have trouble even believing it. Yeah, and he just... every I just don't understand how he still is allowed to open his mouth. <laughs> but, um... All right, guys. We appear so to be evil leprechaun. He is an evil leprechaun. We appear to be back here, and we're gonna get started up with Twitter questions. This first one is from Zygnotic, who I did see in the stream. If you could be any kind of plant or tree, what would you be? And would you want to be a wild plant or a domesticated plant? I've... I'd want to be a plant where if someone asked you, "Do you toke?" you could say, "Yeah." Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Venus flytrap. Why? Because they're plants with mouths. Isn't that awesome? You yeah, but there, you're like... named Venus. Yeah, and Venus was sexy as hell. <laughs> All right, so the question is, would you, do you want to be a domesticated or a wild Venus flytrap? A wild one. Yeah, dude. How do you domesticate ones? a Venus flytrap? Off the hooks flytrap. You can't have a domesticated one. <laughs> do, you, do you get a Venus flytrap to just eat certain things? <laughs> or eat it <laughs> dead bugs. <laughs> eat it dead bugs. I've seen it before. I like, love how serious Fenton is about this dude, question. A wild like, would you want, would you want Scott to be your master and he would just drop dead bugs? No, I want to be a wild Venus flytrap because those those go hard. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, like, they'll eat a bald eagle. Those what? go hard. No, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> Alex just, like, shuts that right the fuck down. I like your idea. I want to be toked. <laughs> When you can be told, you have my permission to die. I just when you lie in ashes, you have my permission to die because I smoked I wanna, you. So I want to be a cactus so I can be baked all day in the sun. <laughs> You'll be like that desert. Four twenty cactus, cactus like, swag. Cactus are like the guidos of plants. They're always in the sun getting their tan. That's amazing. Yeah, you want to be the dunkest of plants. <laughs> Some cactuses even flex, so that yeah, that they're all sitting like this. <laughs> yeah, all of them, every so single one. that getting swole. <laughs> <sighs> I just want to be smoked. It's really my only answer. <laughs> I want to be like I'll be like a salvia plant though. So you smoke me and you get ridiculously high and see a bunch of crazy yeah. shit for five minutes. I, I want to like get I want to get smoked by Michael Phelps after doing it. Brandon would be a domesticated like really rare kind of flower whose owner like took like really specific care of him and like oh, a bonsai a, tree a water bottle and like would spray it on him like Brandon's, Brandon's a bonsai super tree. gentle <laughs> I like how Alex's idea is like being weed that Michael Phelps smokes because that's going to be like the closest thing he ever gets to success in his life Wow! Oh, oh snap! Oh, shit. Damn! Oh shit! Burn! Oh. <laughs> Damn! I feel like I feel Rama. like APL Yo, is here. All right, next question from that one. <laughs> Ch channeling <laughs> APL into depressing comments. <laughs> At deepest voice asks, if you had a Lambo, would you get the exterior made out of leather? And if not, what material would the exterior be? So I I picked this question because. I don't know if you meant to say interior or if you yeah. actually meant would you get the exterior <laughs> made out of leather. Exterior Lambo. I know what I would, if it had to be the exterior, I would get it with uh, scratch and stiff uh, stickers. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah, so if anyone keys your car, it'd smell really good. Yeah, it'd just be like, Kss, and then like the, the scents. I, don't, I just tried to pantomime scents, like odors. <laughs> that didn't work out very well. This is one time when it's actually better not to watch. Yeah, you shouldn't yeah. be watching when they fit in pantomimes that. I I mean, since it's the exterior, I just want it to be made out of stuff that car exteriors are made out of, I suppose. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Honest answer from Dan. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> also, it's too, doesn't, kinda doesn't useless. Leather, what happens to leather when it gets hot? Or rains. Yeah. yeah. You're in like... some deep shit. I feel like leather <laughs> is like the bottom of my list for exteriors. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Leather car would not be a good idea. Alright, at Yummy Man Ass, a name that never gets old. Never. What type of addition, ad, additions will be made to the KB Mod yacht with the money from the tribe tournament at QuakeCon? Probably gonna buy a Venus flytrap or something now. <laughs> Put it on the we boat, actually dude. we actually need to buy the yacht with, with that yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you have no. you seen the yacht? We definitely probably stole that shit. We're gonna buy a yacht to put <laughs> the KB Mod yacht inside of. <laughs> Yachtception <laughs> is gonna happen. 
Yachts on yachts on yachts on yachts. We're going to put the KV Mod yacht inside of the bigger yachts pool. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be Dan's personal yacht. <laughs> As I co-tick all the profits from KB Mod, <laughs> I'm gonna make this a not fun place to work. Um, we're gonna it's run hard this not shit. to have fun on a yacht. I know, right? Especially if we're working on there. Like that's literally like we go to the marina like every day to go to work. <laughs> we could just hop on the harbor and just tow it out a couple couple miles and then start working. I don't think you get much bandwidth on a yacht, though. Apparently the leather, now. the leather car thing is because the game, the rapper, spent $200,000 on a leather Ferrari. Wow. Yeah, somebody just linked it. The and game is retarded. Yeah. yeah. So I, I choose to think that he meant interior instead of this ridiculous story. I'm looking at this now. I I'm, hope there's not sound. I feel like there's the going to be chat. sound. Oh my god, this thing is the worst. Oh my goodness, I'm loading up this, loading up this leather Lambo picture, people listening. What? <laughs> Why would what you is that? do this? Oh, I can't see it. It's loading too slow because all of my bandwidth is going. It's just the black bucket. leather on a Ferrari. That is that's the dumbest awful. shit I've ever seen in my life. That makes the Ferrari essentially useless. So that's, I mean, that's good for him, I guess. Um, this next question. Got plenty to blow. This next question is from at Mr. Viper 9307. When will Al Sham No Wow start selling his laughter to cure cancer? Well. I've actually been thinking about it. So, to get me to come to the hospital, you've got to pay an upfront fee of about five thousand dollars. Okay, <laughs> and, and when I'm when I'm inside of your uh, hospital room, you have a subscription fee for every single minute that I'm in the room. <laughs> and then when I laugh, when I laugh, that's the biggest fee. So every every time I breathe in, I charge a physical fitness fee of like ten thousand dollars. Let's just say, and then, and then when I laugh. I charge about twenty five thousand. This takes a lot of work, so I have to monetize it very well. <laughs> okay, but since since Mark is the world's biggest douchebag, <laughs> all those all those kids out there with cancer, I, I found a loophole in, in Mark's in Mark's plan. Just make your make a wish to have Mark come visit. <laughs> Boom. Oh god, there we go. Yeah, make a wish. I'll tie this in right now real nicely. Let's just have Mark join our extra life team instead. Okay. Oh, oh, oh dangerous. Boom. Boom. Dangerous? Done. How's that dangerous? <laughs> <laughs> dangerous. We'll pay his appearance fee and all that. Don't you never heard that? that? It's dangerous. My appearance fee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say that's dangerous when something is dangerous. They no. just don't make statements about things. Something's being dangerous. dangerous when something's like it's that's such a good idea, I man. Mean, people dangerous. are wondering if they can no, pay you. No, when I say that's dangerous, I mean I could probably die from that. Alright, well dangerous. you're a relief pitcher, so your opinion really matters. Yes, the chat. I am Bob Kotick of cancer. That is yes, the yeah, the Bobby Kotick of cancer research. <laughs> That's uh, right. it'll, be, it'll be Fenton's make a wish. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nick Fenton will finally die, and I get to be there to console him while it happens. Yes, I don't know, that'll be great. Get to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so next question: Tripping Bowser, check schoolgirl. If you could add, remove, or change any law, what would you choose? Killing beavers with jet skis be punishable by death. That's his, uh... That's an example. That's his example. Wow, Nick, you'd be dead as fuck. Um, it's not confirmed. It's still not confirmed if that beaver... A beaver with a jet ski? No, it's not confirmed okay. if it died. It could have been <laughs> unconscious. He, he didn't get the dog tag. It's not kill confirmed. Yeah, it's not kill confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> I hit the I hit the beaver with the desk. I'm like, hold tags, dude. Hold tags. Hold tags. Go for the beaver Moab. <laughs> hold hold <up>. tags. <laughs> oh my goodness. You are running beaver support. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really awful, too. If your beaver oh, needs support, problem. you've got other options. You, you're another problems um, that you need to to kind of figure out. And I don't know what would be legal. If I could oh, make it, I don't even know. I feel like there's, there's, yeah, that's there's too probably much a lot of to choose on. Uh, hmm. I don't even smoke weed, but I would make, I would make pot completely legal. Wow, that solves so many problems, what a, though. What a bandwagon! No, it solves bandwagon. so many problems, man. So many problems that solves. I guess that'd probably be my serious answer. I would, I would like, I would legalize weed and legalize gambling, online gambling. Just tax the shit out of it. Boom. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'd just make Fenton illegal. Let's just stop there. <laughs> um, 
I'd make there be a height requirement. Wow, dude. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> Wow! What? Just being alive? Yep. <laughs> Everything. No, I wouldn't make you like be killed. I would make it so you, you have to watch everybody else do things live. you couldn't. <laughs> it would be like a perpetual children child in an amusement park. Like you can't ride that. Like it would be like that for life. Be like you can't go in that restaurant. You can't go see that movie. You can't do anything. <laughs> Someone just suggested in the stream that we make Bobby Kotick illegal. That's. I mean, that's pretty I, good. Yeah, that's the best idea. <laughs> If your name is Bobby Kotick, you can be killed. Yeah, he'd have to stand perfectly still, and if he moved even a slight... Hey, fucker, go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> so this last question is from Rastaman Rifla Rifla. He is like... He's, he's prolific. Like the past four, prolific. I swear. What was That's the what longest time you stayed much. awake for straight, and why? Um, I would say probably Extra Life in recent memory. Was up for a damn long time, the f the first one. Brand was up for like the whole like thirty hours or whatever during that. Yeah, and mine. I mean, recently mine would be either Extra Life or Child's Play, but I've definitely pulled some long nights in college. Like occasionally, when you you know when you open the textbook for the first time about twelve hours before the test. Yeah, that's always a good Ooh, life choice Brand as well. Is a rebel. When I went to California, like, a week and a half ago, I stayed up for, like, 27 hours because my flight was at, like, I had to go to the airport at, like, 5, so I just didn't sleep. Ever. And that was a bad idea. A, same thing for me as a plane ride. When I went to PAX last year, I think the last day I probably got up at, like, 8, 7, 8 in the morning, probably earlier than that, and then I did a red-eye flight back home, so it was uh, wow. definitely over 24 hours that I stayed up. You get through like that zombie mode part of that. Yeah. Like. Yeah, I can't. I can't sleep on a plane. Like, so every time I do a red eye flight, I'm just. You get through like the part where your awake, face just around. feels awful. Like your eyes itch and. Like, yeah. You just want to stop being conscious. The, the Nick Fenton life simulator. <laughs> My your eyes itch. I don't perpetually suffer from eye itch, but. <laughs> I think in school last year I I didn't sleep and I didn't sleep the night and then I had to I have like twelve. 14, 15 hour days sometimes, so I think it was like, I don't know, maybe 30, 30 hours before I went to bed. A long like, time. You like get beyond the zombie phase though, and then at a certain point you're just hysterical. Like, you're pretty much oh, high yes. at that Everything point. Everything funny. You're yeah. so tired, yeah. it's just like, anything will set you off. Yep. It's hilarious. <laughs> Alright guys, rapid fire time. Rapid fire? And these first two rapid fire questions from the same dude, Jack695. First one Does Brandon spend A, more time brushing his teeth, or B, more time applying the toothpaste? Applying the toothpaste. <laughs> the applying the toothpaste. the toothpaste. That's not even. With, with the credit card. It took card. him eight hours to with do the, the thermal paste, so. Actually, no, Brandon applies the credit card. He applies the toothpaste with the credit card to each tooth. <laughs> <laughs> He treats then, every then, tooth like a heat sink. <laughs> <laughs> Spreads it super thin. Oh yeah, I just I, I just put the toothpaste like on the tooth itself, and then I go over it nicely with the credit card. <laughs> and and Jack, second question: Would you rather have to lick your own knees for ten minutes every day, or have to buy everything <laughs> in sets of two? Such a weird combo. I'm gonna go I with feel... lick your own knees. Yeah, yeah I'm licking like... my knees. Buying everything in sets of two that with certain things that'd be so, so much expensive. money, dude. You're like, I just want one car, but I have to buy two or I die. Or two so, houses. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ridiculous. God. I've got two mortgages. I feel like I know, yeah, but you, this fucking you almost, sucks. You almost have to go with the knees because it's like at, at a certain point you just won't be able to buy things because <laughs> you have to buy two of them. I'd like one piece of pizza. Okay, I'll take two. Mother what if you want something that there's only one of? Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> Nick would have been broke be like as fuck. Ten years down the road, you're gonna get like eight minutes into a knee licking session, and you're just gonna be like, "Fuck this!" You're gonna go crazy. <laughs> but what if you want to buy something that there's only one of? Yeah, but like, yeah, it's not like it's not like the easiest thing in the world to lick your knee in the first place. Like it's a, it's a, what? it's an ordeal. <laughs> Nick just did it. Nick's knees taste <laughs> like APL's floor. I've been informed by the stream. <laughs> <laughs> APL sink. Oh god. That would oh, be worse. let's not get into that. Next question is from <laughs> RSPCTD. What 
what couple would win the amazing race? Mark and Alex or Nick and Scott? <laughs> I'm going to pick Mark just cuz he's cuz Mark would win. It's just no, it's himself. you and Mark. It's I know what I'm saying. I don't think I'd even be of help. Mark would just do everything and I'd have to just catch up. <laughs> I don't know. It wouldn't be Nick and Scott, dude. I'm pretty sure Scott couldn't get anything done, so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure me and Scott would. You <laughs> might not would be leave. Stuck in, like, the. Like You'd be three at the start of the race. <laughs> yeah, you might not even show up. Like, I'm sure it would be Mark and Alex because if you haven't noticed, part, like, basically the whole thing about The Amazing Race is you want to get there first, and Scott never shows up on time. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> like, Ever. That's the problem. For anything. Like, everybody else would be on, like, in this episode, we're in London, and it'd be like, and Nick and Scott are in Namibia. <laughs> <laughs> like, nowhere fucking near where they're supposed to be. This is the next question from a Ruthless Badger. Have you ever fallen off a bar stool? Apparently, you so. have. I've watched Only Use Me Blade break a bar stool and fall to the floor. So I have not fallen off of one myself, but uh, Blade... We were in a bar in Seattle at PAX, and he was sitting on a stool, and it broke under him, and he fell to the floor. It was wow. amazing. That would hurt. That big of a guy going down from a bar stool is uh, <laughs> it's a pretty big for people. <laughs> <laughs> Only Izzy Blade is not a small guy. I mean, we did find Tetra Ninja face down in a planter. In a potted plant. In a planter <laughs> in Boston. <laughs> but I don't know that that counts as falling off. God, I wish I could have seen that. I wish. Fucking PAX gone wild, man. I but know, instead, just... I had to sleep with Dan's drunk face next to me. Shut up! <laughs> yeah, are you are you okay over there? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> I'd had some drinks, all right? God. A couple. So, next question. What's a Preston? Is there a way to install games for Windows Live into Origin to increase efficiency? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. That's my I, answer. I choose C, death. Yeah. God. Uh, this next question is from the Batman CJ. On a scale of the best thing to happen to gaming to better than dicks, how good is Battlefield free to play? <laughs> it's not. I don't want it on that scale. <laughs> what a scale? Say, I don't, what is what is the bottom of that scale? <laughs> like that's like on a on a scale of ten to ten. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Better than dicks? I think he went up to fifteen there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dicks my goodness. Are really out there. Yeah, Dicks. That I game's mean, bad. That game's bad. I haven't played it. It's I bad. haven't played it either. It's bad. What's Don't bad ever. about it, Nick Fenton? Come on. Where's the constructive criticism? <laughs> and it doesn't bad. exist. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> this last question from Mr. Wicked Rhyme to wrap it up. If you could be anyone's underpants, who would you be? Kate Upton. Solid. <laughs> no, you'd be Scott's, dude. Quit lying. We all know right. Alex. Scott. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I'd be I I'd, I'd be Ken Levine's underpants. Wow, dude! Wow, <laughs> wow I was not expecting. That. I was. <laughs> I was. I like Ken it. Levine far on me all day. <laughs> you would wow. you would take Ken Levine's skid marks? <laughs> <laughs> Ken Levine's skid marks on the IGN scale are nine point five. Wow, wow, dude, that's that game is... of the year quality right there. Yeah, that <laughs> game is... of the century, oh, oh, Ken yeah, Levine's that's... skid marks. Wow. Game of the year at IGN, and they only give that out to like 35 games. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, um, God, I don't even know, dude. I Kate be Upton's Bobby an Kotick's excellent underwear. Show. Bobby Kotick's underwear. <laughs> dude, Those are probably some expensive no ass yes, underwear, though. Expensive ass underwear, dude. I bet like, they're made completely out of gold. And he they just probably shits are. money into them. <laughs> he shits money. Yeah, you're clean all the time. <laughs> that's money. how we. That's how we won the job as CEO. Everyone came in and gave a, a presentation. And he just pulled his pants down and shat money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised nobody said Gaben. No, I'm not. I'm not surprised by that actually. Nobody <laughs> wants to be. <laughs> I've seen Gaben. <laughs> I was gonna say that could be a dicey proposition. Yeah. There. Like yeah, you might you might like overhear some secrets about what's going on at Valve, but is it really worth it? <laughs> Cut to like Gaben never wears underwear because he's just a baller. <laughs> he's just so baller. He doesn't even wear pants ever. There. He doesn't. That whenever he's wearing jeans, that's actually just his skin. <laughs> his skins are jeans. Skits are cheap. And he Gaben, molds, he Gaben molds has fresh more air every day. Gaben spends more on R and D than the US military. He has everything. <laughs> Gaben yes. just has an inventory full of stuff that he has from like TF two that he just equips to himself and it just becomes <laughs> 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 I'd like to thank Rampage Vin for giving me my legit answer here. I'd be Felicia Day's underwear. 
Oh, yeah. In a second, dude. <laughs> you get to also overhear some sweet video games while being on a hot chick. So that's cool with me. <laughs> what about you, Brandon? Uh, I don't know. I might. I mean, I'd probably... I think I might go with like like either like a Carmack or a Bill Gates. Someone you know, someone that's not those guys don't shit either. Can I, so can I raise my hand. That's... None of us answered hot girls. Does anybody, <laughs> anybody see a problem with this? I, I just answered Felicia Day. Oh, Somebody did you? told yeah. you to answer Felicia Day. You didn't oh, answer that on your own terms. terms. That's <laughs> true. The thing is, the thing is, Nick, that at a certain point, the novelty of that would wear off. Exactly. So like, yeah, 